So let's add shooting onto our enemies, which means onto our AI controller. We're now doing a hit every, let's see, we basically need to be doing this here. Okay. So, mm. so we need a timer actually. I'm going to say float last shot or let's do it like this public float fire rate. I'm going to say 0.1f public or just a float current fire and current fire or if current fire less than zero then you're actually shooting else current fire minus delta okay the reason why i'm using delta time and not time real time since startup and so on is because i know the ai is not going to cheat uh, the way we're shooting okay so once that is done then current fire should be set to fire rate and let's encapsulate the method that will actually start shooting void handle shooting and I think for the most part it's going to be the exact same thing as our player way of, of shooting so instead of that let's do let's copy all of this actually yeah, I guess that's the same thing so I guess we could place this somewhere else let's see actually let's copy this and drop it underneath our game references so let's do public static void recast shoot now right out of the bat we have a few things that are missing first of all we're missing the transform our own transform and we're missing the spread And that's about it actually because we have an eye suitable and yeah that's about it so on the controller instead of doing all of this you can just say game references dot rec as suit m transform and spread inventory manager current weapon weapon spread so copy that and going onto the AI controller side handle shooting you can do the same thing you can also have a particle system for the muzzle fire okay and current spread we can just leave it up to the enemy to decide spread let's do 0.3f just to make it you know Uh, weapon spread just to make it a little bit more of that so muzzle fire dot play of course we're not handling uh, anything about ammo or stuff like that but that should do it so let's go now and fix our enemy so he's able to start shooting at us as well okay i'm going to replace this i'm going to copy component first i'm going to find this one down i'm going to delete it i'm going to duplicate that and actually we can just make this into a prefab um, let's unpack and place that and uh, okay keep that there now on the hand right and there we go so any changes now are going to be on the same on both of them 
Uh, let's unpack this guy as well. And for this one, we just need to assign the particle system, which is this. Okay, he's not going to be able to shoot at us because we do not have the the eye suitable. But you can see that he's able to shoot us. Well, it just defaults back to the default one. But you can see he's actually searching for us. Of course, we need to to make it, you know, like he's not actually. Uh, that OP. Well, that's one way to do it. So the other thing that we can do is to create a line for all our yeah for all our uh, how you call it and yeah fires or or, or our bullets to so we'll actually visualize their positions. So, to do that, let's just create, yeah, I guess we can just do a bull dictionary as well. Yeah, okay, let's do that. And then, on our game reference, when you are actually firing, we're going to do game object, geo, object puller, get object, bullet line okay then we're going to find uh, we're actually going to f have the start position which is the origin okay we have that so I guess there's no need for that so let's go below then we're going to find the end position and the end position is always going to be well, if it's nothing, then it's going to be by 100. Origin plus and transfer by 100, okay. Otherwise, end position is going to be hit dot point. After, outside of the raycast, we have our game object. We're going to find the line renderer. Geo, get component. line renderer and then line dot set position 0 to be the origin the line set position 1 to be the end position okay then uh, this will place them there okay then we need something that will actually close the line I will fix it later. Let's fix the the, f the line render first or bullet line, and then let's make this a line renderer. Uh, we want to use world space, okay? Materials. Let's just use anything. To be honest, let's use a material. It can be a standard one with fade something like that I guess that should do it bullet line not bucket line okay uh, receive shadows no dynamic occlude no cast shadows off okay we have two positions okay and for width, maybe something like this should do it. Okay, then let's go to our prefabs. And let's go under our object puller now. Let's find it. And let's create the bullet line. Okay, and we don't need this many. I guess 10 should do it. And uh, maybe that's even too much. Let's find our prefab and let's drop our bullet line. And 
Yeah, we forgot to enable the bullet line. So Geo to set active to true. Uh, the rest, one other thing that I wanted to do on the object puller was actually have a system dot non serialized game object parent object and then parent object equals new game object and give it a name of pool parent not the cool parent okay uh, geo transform dot parent equals pool parent or parent object dot transform that's for us to do not spam things onto onto our scene. Yeah, okay. That's more powerful than I wanted to have it. But you get the idea. And of course, they do not close right now. So let's say change this to something even smaller. And actually, I guess we can just change this. The width, I thought there was Hmm. Uh, why else no? Yeah, there was a way to actually control this script, I think. But anyway, we'll do this via via this. So we're going to make this as bullet line. Open it up. So for bullet line, we need the line renderer, of course. Let's make it public. I'm going to assign it from the inspector. I don't really care. Void on enable, however. And on update. So, on update, we need. Actually, let's see. Line render dot size. No. Let's find it from here. And width, width. So, it width, width curve with multiplier so if width multiplier is less than zero or equal zero game object set active false on enable line header dot width multiplier equals one and else a line renderer dot width multiplier minus time dot delta time public float speed I'll say 0.2 F by speed subdivided by speed okay so let's close that as that there then bullet line drag the line render and just apply all and that should probably make the bullets the bullet lines close yeah okay that's pretty good actually the origin needs to be set up a little bit because you need to be slightly forward so the bullets are actually coming from where the muzzle is but that's pretty good now let's find our camera camera manager uh, yeah, the bullet line I as well, and let's make it even tinier, even smaller, doesn't matter, and just apply all. Okay, save, then uh, onto our game references for where we are shooting. Let's see, on our origin, we're also going to add and transform that forward. So now they should start shooting from a little bit forward, not just the way it was before. Yeah. Okay, now it looks correct. And obviously with uh, adding a gradient onto the bullets will work even better. Well, that's not that bad actually. We can even try, let's see, tolerance, visual space, materials. Mm. 
Yeah. Uh, let's try this, I guess. Something like that. And I think because we have the material, and of course we need to apply all first. I think we, because we have the material, that's not going to work. This color is not going to work. So I'm going to retry and remove that. Yeah, now it doesn't even have anything. So let's just paste that back again. Mm, forgot to apply all. Okay, let's keep it for now. That should do it. We get the idea of how this works. And let's make it so that you can actually hit the player, which means we're just going to set the eye suitable to this and going to implement the interface and get hit effects you can say public string hit effects return hit effects and let's just assign that to just be blood Yeah, of course, that's kind of too pretty bloody, I guess. And of course, our enemies are kind of stupid right now. Awesome. At least it's funny. And I think maybe we can also change the on the particles. To make them be, well, we'll see. Blood spray effect. Let's find it. Okay, let's change the material yeah, when we find it. It doesn't actually have a, even a material. So, how does this work then? Blood gloves. Yeah, here it is. Okay, let's do PSX, transparent, vertex lead, uh, yeah, it's missing the vertex, but that should work, because those are messes as well, they just don't have blood, okay. And maybe we need to set that to red. Oh uh, yeah, and it's missing. Yeah, because it was white from the start, I think. Yeah, they have this. The texture is actually white. With just this. So this needs to be a red texture for this to work, I guess. Anyway, let's set this back to what it was, unless they have color, they do not have color over a lifetime. Anyway, maybe let's say PSX transparent, I need no, you know, vertex lead. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. Let's just keep it at standard or standard specular. And we don't want any smoothness. And that should do it. So that's it for this part. As always, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and if you'd like to see more videos, more series, more of everything. And we still have a lot of things to do for this series. So consider supporting my patrons who can keep making all of these nice things we're making. I'll see you next time.